Next, we'll hear from two talented students who were nominated for the honor of speaking at commencement by their peers. First, I'd like to ask Shane Kernut, a candidate of, for the Bachelor of Fine Arts, to join me at the podium. In addition to the two high honor cords for his academic achievement as an, as an honorably discharged veteran of the United States Air Force, Shane wears a red, white, and blue cord representing his military veteran service. Shane, we thank you for your service. Hello, everyone. There are a lot of people here. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so firstly, it's a tremendous honor to be speaking with you today, especially since today is the day we come together to celebrate our achievement of graduation. I have spent the last few days picking my brain for words to use while on this stage. In our modern architecture course, Mr. Ashworth dropped some shaker philosophy on us that continues to resonate with me to this day. The quote goes, don't make something unless it is both necessary and useful, but if it is both necessary and useful, make it beautiful. I'll do my best to honor that both in this speech and within every aspect of my life from now on. Much like selecting the proper furniture, fixtures, and equipment for a space, these words need to coagulate in a cohesive way that will inspire, celebrate our accomplishments, honor ourselves and each other, and package it in a short and sweet way so we can get onto the best part of graduation and walk across this stage. While brainstorming some of the things I wanted to cover, the top theme within my self-generated mood board came down to one word, love. Therefore, I want to communicate with you right now that I am speaking with you through my heart. Love is the only thing that is absolutely real. When I, when I was entering the Air Force eons ago, one interaction struck, stuck with me even to this day. It came from an intimidating master sergeant that was administering our final exam to graduate basic training. He towered over us and said, when the exam starts, you can look up for inspiration, down out of desperation, but never to your left or right for information, <laughs> implying that, that cheating would get us in a heap of trouble. That little quip stuck with me, even after passing the test and continuing onward through my military career. I even entered the school with the same mentality, coming from a place of self-driven motivation and an I-can-do-this-myself attitude. Do you know what I learned? The master sergeant was wrong. In a community such as this one, and like any other branch in the military, uh, it's necessary to look both to your left and to your right for inspiration. Perhaps it's a good time right now to reflect upon all those that helped us make it here and to send some gratitude their way. This has all been a group effort, so thank your friends and your family, thank your children and your parents, thank the staff, thank the bees, thank your barber and barista, thank your therapist, <laughs> and thank your children and your parents. This has all been a group effort. So thank your friends and family. I'm just repeating that line, I'm very sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> it is imperative to help one another and to accept help when it is offered and available. Nothing in the world can replicate good old-fashioned teamwork and collaboration. Everything makes sense when we come together, to celebrate our differences instead of using them against one another, and to walk forward with gratitude. It is up to us to keep the faith that things will continue to heal. It's always darkest before the dawn. The dark part is well behind us because the light has come already. The world is opening up again, which is a far cry from what it was a few years ago when the city started following protocols in the name of safety and health. The camp has battened down the hatches in preparation for an invisible storm that would envelop the planet. But like a fine-tuned engine, NYSID transformed overnight to accommodate these changes. Most of the sweeping overhaul happened behind the scenes. It could not have been accomplished without a dedicated staff. We rightfully celebrate first responders and essential workers, but we must also celebrate the unsung heroes that kept the ship afloat through rough waters. So thank you again to the faculty and professors for everything that you did and continue to do to keep the magic of NYSET alive. During the storm, we sheltered in place and cocooned for both fear of the unknown and love and respect we have for the most vulnerable and cherished members of our communities. I don't need to tell you about the surreal feeling of it because it is a collective trauma that we are all still navigating. We all have stories to tell. The impulse to return to how things were before Miss Rona held us in bondage is great, but I challenge that things shouldn't go back to how they were. 
A lot of the aspects within our collective past didn't work for us. It is an uncomfortable realization. But discomfort is aroused only to bring the need for correction into awareness. As designers, we want to capitalize on all the best things in a space and rethink the parts that don't necessarily work. We are coming up to a time where we do not have to accept the things if they do not mean they benefit the greater good. We have the tools, wisdom, creativity, and passion to redesign the planet and rebuild the parts that didn't work out. We have the choice to act as a steward for the planet, create environments for our future generations to thrive in, and to create a reality that works for everyone. No one gets left behind. In Texas, they say, y'all means all. Change occurs at both the macroscopic and individual level. We are changing every day. About 330 billion cells are replaced daily, equivalent to about 1% of all of our cells in our bodies. In 80 to 100 days, 30 trillion will have replenished the equivalent of an entirely new you. We have had the time to reevaluate the things that are most important to us. We have had time to grow, find our voices and distinct personal aesthetics. When inside the chrysalis, oh, sorry, when caterpillars transform into butterfly, they must first completely liquefy themselves into a nasty goo phase inside the chrysalis, leaving nothing behind but vital organs and a brain. We aren't puddles of nasty goo anymore. We are a gaggle of beautiful and refined butterflies just waiting to explode into the design world with unapologetic color and enthusiasm. We bring to you unrivaled style, a world-class education, and an endless drive to continue to make the world a more beautiful space starting from the inside out. Every passing minute is another chance and another gift to turn it all around. So congratulations again to everyone here and to those that could not be with us today. We are all family, and family means that no one gets left behind. So thank you for your time and happy graduation. Now, if I may ask Laura Lindsay, candidate of the Master of Fine Arts, to join me at the podium. Wow. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I was... Uh, I knew what I was getting myself in for when I signed up for this. Um, okay, welcome to all my classmates, now graduates. The graduates of 2020 and 2021. Faculty, administration, guests, family, and friends. Today is a day for celebration. Huge congratulations to everyone who is graduating today. We did it. And I want to say thank you all for helping make my time here very special. I need to say a big thank you to everyone else in the room who is here to celebrate with us. The faculty have been wonderful, guiding us through our three-year journey from our humble beginnings of learning to measure and redesign the student lounge to the outstanding set of diverse projects that hopefully you got to see at the thesis exhibition last night. It is difficult for me to explain just how much each of us poured into those projects giving heart, soul, sweat, and tears. To compare our earlier projects to our thesis designs really is a measure of the astonishing progress that we all had to make to get to this point. To friends and family, thank you for all of the incredible support that has enabled each of us to achieve what we have and for enduring our stress, absence, and sometimes outright panic it is such an honor to have been selected by my classmates to speak at graduation. It is also such a great surprise to me because I am a very reluctant public speaker. So I promise to keep to my allotted 60 minutes. <laughs> I imagine that my graduate school experience was a little different from most of yours because I am a mum of two small boys. 
It was not without some envy that I imagined you all after hours attending clothing optional bacchanals while I was home chasing my naked two-year-olds around the apartment. Thank goodness for the fuzzy background app on Zoom, which perhaps I should have used more often. But then I realized that each of us will have had our own personal challenges during these unprecedented times, and that these differences in our experiences are small compared to the great common process that we all put ourselves through, by which I mean the education, the curriculum, and the community that makes up this superb school. In particular, there are three aspects of this educational experience that I found most valuable. Firstly, to not be too precious during design development. In just my second week at NYSID, we were asked to build a simple model out of card to express our ideas for a gathering space. I carefully prepared my model and excitedly awaited what would be one of my first design critiques. The discussion moved quickly. Do you have any scissors? He asked. Bemused, I passed them over and then watched in shock as he cut my model into pieces. <laughs> what followed was a lively discussion about using these newly new cut pieces to explore different ways of expressing my idea and this new process leading to an improved final design. Learning how important it is to not get too emotionally attached to an idea and be able to be open to constructive criticism was invaluable, and I have carried this lesson through every subsequent project and critique. Secondly, thoughtful design. We learned the import importance of thoughtful design over the merely beautiful or inspirational, and it begins with asking questions. What will each user's experience be in this space? What is the context? What past experiences can I draw upon? What material selections will be optimal? Only after all of these questions and more have been asked and answered and asked again can a thoughtful design process with a strong concept take shape. Finally, broadening our aesthetic horizons. NYSID's curriculum has taught us how to appreciate design that doesn't necessarily fit with our preferred aesthetic. By gaining knowledge on the historical or social context of architecture and design, we are now able to appreciate something differently as a result of understanding how it came to be. Our course gave us a tremendous challenge, and we should all feel an immense sense of achievement. Through hard work, late nights, napping under our desks, forgetting to press save, and your computer crashing, Overcoming technical difficulties, IT services to the rescue, <laughs> dedication, securing your spot to print your thesis project, and then missing it because you weren't quite ready. <laughs> Finding out a trick in Photoshop or a shortcut in CAD that is life-changing and will save you hours. Learning when to stop the creative process in order to meet the deadline. Building a portfolio interviews, internships, community. Staying at school until 4 a.m., even though you have finished, to be there for friends who need a little longer. Sharing projects with family and friends and realizing how proud they are of you. All of this and more led us to today. As many of our professors shared with us, design is like telling a story. And now it's time for us to start telling ours as we embark into the world of professional interior design. We are the class of 2022. Go create.